Well, this is the first annual. We have a lot of uh, confidence in this group that we're going to be coming back together again. And I hope that you'll enjoy it the entire evening. And I thought I would start out as the chair of our group, giving you a little bit of background about what you're going to experience. Not only what you're going to feel, but what's going to be going on inside of your central nervous system. What is going on in the central nervous system of the performers we're going to be hear, hearing tonight and enjoying. And this is our title slide, Brain and Music, the Mind of the Musician. This quotation is from Vladimir Dubokov, and he said, there is no science without fancy, and there is no art without facts. And what he was suggesting here is that just as those in the arts must have rigor, technique, and rules that they must obey, in science, where that is the rule, also there must be creativity. And Dubokov is shown here on a hillside with a butterfly net, because he was an entomologist. And there is a genus of uh, butterflies named for Nabokov. This diagram shows a little bit about the nervous system. It may be difficult for those behind me, my apologies, but we are videotaping tonight's event and with a little bit of luck you may be able to see it on YouTube if they don't block it. <laughs> the way the nervous system is organized, so sound comes in through our ears and <coughs> like that little spiral that you see and it's organized and it's organized just like this piano is, from bass to treble. On one side, the sound comes in and it goes immediately to both sides of the brain. And both sides ascend, and on the surface area, the temporal lobes, music is again represented this way. So we have a keyboard in our brain, in the lower brain, and also in the upper surfaces of the brain. Curiously, nature has given us differential aptitudes between the two sides. In special listening tests called dichotic listening, studies show that the left ear, right brain is better for music and musical sounds. Whereas the right ear, left brain is more adept at language and language related sounds. This exploration is in the biological foundations of music. All of us, I think, have taken music for granted. We've been exposed to it since childhood. But how is it that people can put on paper these notes and someone can pick up the violin on the table and as some of our performers will tonight, create beautiful music? Well, it's come from a series of investigations that have occurred just in the last 15 years using new neurotechnologies in which brain imaging occurs. And I'll show you some of the techniques that have been used. Some look at the electrical system of the brain so-called evoke potentials, you do something, you recur, record the brain or nerve response. Electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography, transcranial magnetic stimulation, or we look at the brain's anatomy with magnetic resonance imaging, very safe and very accurate. And we can see the function of the brain in the living individual without harm using functional MRI and so-called PET scans, positron emission tomography, but there an isotope is used to oxygen, glucose, or some other um, uh, element. The nervous system from birth is uniquely fitted for music. Within six months of age, studies done, and these are cross-cultural. The ones we're showing later on will be Western music only. Children, newborn babies, and six, uh, by six months can distinguish and respond differentially to pitch, loudness, timbre. And they can recognize melodies. If we do this melody. They know it's the same one here. So even though a different pitch, the child knows, hey, that's the same tune. They can recognize changes in tempo. Infants, like adults, can differentiate different kinds of performances. You know, if you've heard Rubinstein or Horowitz, your brain reacts differently to those two performers. And studies have been done of people listening to different great masters at the keyboard and other instruments. And the response to the same tune or uh, it, uh, music being played by two different professionals is different. Pitch contour, the shape of the sound, 
for the child reacts to the mother's voice this way, it's the same with regards to musical tones. There is something, too, about the organization of music. We, as humans,